Hi everybody and welcome back to Danielle Ability. I thought it would be really fun to show you guys how I fly and what that looks like as somebody who uses a wheelchair and some of the things you're going to encounter and also share some of my tips and tricks with you guys to hopefully make that process easier for you. So let's go ahead and get started. There's a couple different things that will be different depending on how long you're traveling for and where you're going and that kind of thing. Uh, this was just a quick weekend trip, so I didn't have a lot of luggage. But if I do have a lot of luggage, I definitely ask for more help from airport staff. So if I have a big suitcase, I'm going to ask somebody to carry it for me. If I have a really short connecting flight, things will be a little bit different. So it all kind of depends on the situation, but this was a quick weekend trip. So I didn't have a lot of luggage, so I was actually able to pretty much manage it on my own. Um, but as you'll see, there's a couple little exceptions to that. The first thing that's really important is the kind of luggage that you have. I made sure that I bought luggage that had different sizes so that I didn't always have to have the same size suitcase with me depending on what I was doing. So the set of luggage that I bought has three different suitcases and a carry-on bag. So if it's just a quick weekend trip like this one, I just have my little suitcase and my carry-on. sure that you get to the airport in plenty of time. I know a lot of people will, you know, only have an hour or whatever to do the whole thing, but I always make sure that I get there really early because I'm always the first person on the plane. They always board people who use wheelchairs or need assistance of some kind. They always board those people first. So I always have to make sure that I'm early so that I'm there ready whenever they're ready to start boarding. I don't really pre-check in because I have to go up to the counter anyways because I want to let them know that I'm gonna need an aisle chair to get on the plane and that I may or may not need assistance getting to the gate. So in this situation, I didn't need any assistance. I was able to pretty much get there on my own but if it would have been a longer trip and I had more things to carry, I would have asked if they could provide me with assistance getting through security and to my gate. But regardless, I let them know that I need an aisle chair when I get on the plane so that they're able to call ahead to my gate and let them know that I'm coming and to have the aisle chair ready for me to board. And you're going all the way through the right? I am. And I'll need an aisle chair as well, okay. so if they can just make sure there's one. Before and then, do you have a tag before an adult or before? I don't have a tag. Okay, so they'll actually give you like a pink hard stock tag down there. Um, they're better than the other ones we used to have. Yeah. Oh, okay. Rip off. This is actually hard stock. Oh, okay. Cool. I make sure that they have my seat assigned as a window seat because I've sat in aisle seats in the past and it's super inconvenient because you're the first person on the plane. So then anybody that comes after you that's going to be sitting in the seats next to you by the window, they're going to have to climb over you, which is super awkward for everybody. And if they have to get up to go to the bathroom, they're going to have to climb over you again. Then when the plane lands and they're getting off, they're going to have to climb over you again because you're the last person off the plane. So I always make sure that I'm seated in a window seat. It takes a little bit more effort to get to the window seat, but it makes things a lot easier in the long run. All right, Ms. Marks, do you prefer an aisle or a window? Window. A window. Okay. 
The next thing is getting through security. And this is definitely not a fun process. It's not something that is enjoyable. It's awkward, but I try to just zone it out and not overthink it and just they do what they have to do. And the more that I cooperate and just like get through it, the easier and quicker it's gonna be. I'm not able to go through the metal detectors because obviously my wheelchair would set all of those off. So I have to get the full pat down every time that I fly. They're going to test your chair, they're gonna wanna pat down your cushion, all those different things to make sure you don't have anything hidden or anything like that. They do ask sometimes if I can remove my shoes. I typically just say no because it does take me a lot of time to get my shoes on and off. So I pretty much just say no and they're able to test them anyways. So it's not a big deal. So then the next part is getting to your gate. And I made sure that the carry-on bag that I have has straps on it. So I sit it on my lap and then I actually put the straps around my head, uh, around my neck so that I can wheel without it falling off of my lap because I have a super short lap and things tend to not stay on it very well. That's how it works for me. Um, thankfully, I never have the bag super heavy so it doesn't hurt my neck in any way and it's sitting on my lap so it's not actually pulling on my neck it's just kind of sitting there and putting it around my neck helps it not fall forward so that's what works for me something else may work for you or you can ask someone to help you carry it whatever you want to do i just tend to like to do things myself so that's how i do it Once you get to your gate, you want to check in again at that desk and let them know you're there and you're the person that needs the aisle chair. And the other reason that you want to check in is because they need to put a tag on your chair because they're going to check it the same way that they would a stroller or anything like that. They're going to check it and put it under the plane with a tag on it. I'm going to Atlanta okay. and I'll be an aisle chair. I just wanted to make sure someone has Okay. Did you stop a phone at all or no? I did. Yeah. You did? Do they know? Yeah. Okay, but I'll make sure they're there for you. Okay. So you definitely want to make sure that you check in when you get to your gate. So then at that point, you just kind of wait until they come to get you. They'll let you know that they're ready to board. They will help you down the, the whatever that's called, the hallway that gets you to the plane. And then it's there that they'll transfer you onto the aisle chair. And the reason that there's an aisle chair is because it's a lot more narrow so it can fit between the seats. So they're going to transfer you onto that, which I'm able to transfer myself. If you're not able to, they're there to help you. They're very used to if you need them to lift you, they can do that. Um, so they'll lift you or you can transfer onto the aisle chair and then they're going to strap you in, which is annoying because you're not going very far, but for liability, they have to make sure that you're secure so that you're not gonna fall out or anything like that. So they do strap you in, they put straps across your chest, across your legs, all of that. So then once you get to your seat, you 
just transfer over. Again, if they need to help lift you, they can do that. Um, I just transfer myself. The one thing that can be a little bit hard is if the um, armrests don't go up on the plane. Some of them are stuck in the down position, which can be hard because you have to kind of climb over that, um, which I'm able to do pretty easily. It's not horrible, but it is kind of uncomfortable to have to climb over that. So just be aware that that is sometimes an issue depending on the plane. I always, always, always make sure that if I do have a layover, it's at least an hour because I'm always the last one off the plane and I'm always the first one on the plane. So if it takes people forever, if it takes 30 minutes to get everybody off the plane and then I have to be the first one on my next plane, I'm not gonna have enough time to get to my next flight in time for them to board me. So I always make sure that my layovers are at least an hour just to allow for extra time and not to be stressed out about it. The other thing that I do if I have a layover is I always let the people who get me off of the plane take me to my next gate because then I don't have to worry about navigating through the airport on my own. I make sure I'm going where I need to be. They'll know better than I do where my gate is and if it's the right gate. So I always make sure that I let them take me there. And then from there, if I want to go get something to eat, if I have time, you know, if I want to go use the bathroom, I can do that on my own, but I want to make sure that I know where my gate is. I'm at the right gate. I'm there on time. And also, if you are running a little bit behind for your connection, it's an airport employee who can let them know, hey, here's this person that is coming to the flight and she's on her way. So then once you reach your destination, it's basically just backwards process from getting on the plane. They're gonna deboard you. They're gonna have your chair there waiting for you and they'll take you out on the aisle chair. You'll transfer onto your chair and you'll be good to go. And I also usually let them take me to the baggage claim kind of for the same reason that I let them take me to my connecting flight just because they're gonna know how to get there better than I will. So I don't have to worry about navigating through the airport and make sure I'm going in the right direction. Um, and if I do have a big suitcase that I'm needing to get off, they will take it off for me and they'll take me to the sidewalk to meet whoever is picking me up or whatever the case may be. So in those situations, I definitely rely on the airport staff to help me and help with the things that would just be harder if I was doing it on my own. So that is pretty much it. That's the process of flying and how it all works and the situations you may encounter and some of the things you want to think about ahead of time. If you guys have any questions at all, definitely comment below and let me know. I'd be happy to answer whatever questions I can. Be sure to subscribe and share and like and all of those things. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.